Okay, so welcome everyone. Uh, happy Saturday morning. Thank you for joining us. Um, so thrilled to see the faces. We have a small group, but I think it looks like a very passionate group. I want to acknowledge that we're on um, unceded Gitsan territory, specifically uh, on the territory of the House of Nicodane. We are um, thrilled to have an ongoing and growing relationship with um, the House of Nicodane and Chief Nicodane, who is Francis Sampson. And we hope that relationship will keep growing and we can keep building connections there. Uh, we are so happy to welcome Facundo today. He's going to walk us through some of the steps involved in working towards the creation of a mural. So we're really excited. He has some uh, sort of screen sharing things to do and he'll change the camera angles. So bear with us if it goes slow. We did test these out and I think everything's pretty smooth at this point. Um, but yeah, thank you Facundo so much for being here and I will turn it over to you. Hey, hello everybody. To, well, we was just chatting, so I want to say hello to everybody. I am in the Wet'suwet'en territory, and the, and the in the house of the Ginen Dam. That's where I live in the Smithers. Um, and uh, yeah, I like it. What we're gonna do today uh, is um, is go to the process that and I use to work in, in, in murals. I I thought that maybe I was going to. Um, show you where I, where I work and what is my setup. And, um, and then we was uh, starting working on a, on a, on a, on a mural, then, a, then a, a wall. This is the problem I have to share in murals is that the people that uh, um, we have a, a bunch of uh, work, uh, but uh, designs being processed and murals for this season, the summer, but I cannot share those because you know it's not it's better than this, the client or, or or the organization than ask for the the commission and the artists have it until anyways people don't like to to show them so I I just make I just walk around the other day and I and I took a picture of a building and I want to make a mural on so we're gonna make a a little design on a thing on a on this uh, wall. Um, so, but first I thought that we, we, maybe we will, let me see if this thing works. This is, uh, this is here as um, my little setup. So, it's uh, my shop. I do a lot of stuff on the other side is, uh, it's, um, and the other side of these uh, glass doors is um, tools and things I do. I do with um, things that produce dust and then noise and stuff like that. I have it in that thing across the door. I have, and in this side, I have my computers and things on, a, on the camera gear that I use for doing uh, videography. Um, so I, can, I have two different spaces to work with and a lot of space and I'm super happy. I did it before the lumber went up, so it's good. So what I do, and uh, you guys can ask me whatever. I work in a Photoshop, take a picture of a building, and then I come to this uh, little unit here that is called, this is an old Syntec. It's a Wacom, it's a Wacom device. And uh, what it does is like you can draw on the, on the, on the, on the screen straight up with the stylus. Um, I love it. I love doing that because for a couple of reasons. One, one of the main reasons is um, a mural is a, is a thing, it's, um, it, it is site specific. It's a, it's, it's a piece of our public art that it, it lives in a, in, a, in a specific place. To make, a, to make a piece for that place, uh, I like to have a pictures and reference. I like to be there, uh, walk around, see where, where the points of view are gonna be. What is the story of the place? Who and how people interact to this building? Um, and what is the building is about? What is the people who work or live in the building is about? If it's some story to reflect. And that's how I extract things 
uh, to have a topic. I'm, I really love as abstract art. I surround my life with abstract art, but I, I don't, don't do it. I, I am an illustrator. I do illustrations of things uh, of, uh, let me, for me, a mural is a, is a gigantic illustration of the things we choose to highlight. The thing about uh, this thing about mural, uh, about, uh, about the, the wall itself, it's a lot of uh, things that, uh, that uh, tells you what you can do and what you can know depends on the surface and depends of, uh, depends of the time of year, depends of a lot of stuff. So I took a, I walk around and took a picture of this building here. It's, uh, it's the regional hospital. I don't know if you guys see it very well. There we go. It's in focus. So what I thought about this building is uh, first is concrete. You gotta love concrete. Concrete is is an amazing it's an amazing surface to work with. I like it architecturally, and I I like it. I like the texture. I like to spread paint on it, and they are gray and sad, and I love to put color on on those those things. Cinder block, love it. Concrete like this, much better. Because you don't, you, you need to work with less inter interruptions or the less things that are defined by the canvas, by the, the cinder block does that thing, has lines everywhere. These have like a boom, boom, six lines, five lines, couple windows. It has some conduits. It has some electrical wiring, tree, so for me, the surface here to work will be around this section here. Can you guys uh, give me a feedback here if you guys hearing what I'm saying and if it makes sense, it's okay? Cool, I keep going there. So this, uh, this section here is the section and I am really interested on it. Um, I, I really like working on corners because corners invite you to walk around. I like entice people to walk around and, 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 and go and, and look at the building, you know? So this is the entrance here. I say exit only, but it's an entrance <laughs> of the place in general. So people see it more in this side of the building, but this is the place of a concrete without interruptions than I have interest on it. It's the hospital. I love that it's the hospital because hospital has this thing of uh, it's a public place, and it has a lot of things to. And I and then I, I like to work in public places more than in private places. I like to work in outside places more than inside places. For me, uh, it's a very interesting thing to do when it's uh, uh, when maybe the building is not nice. Maybe it's, uh, the worst. The building is better, <laughs> actually. But the exposition, how many eyes are gonna see this building is important to me. Um, so I was thinking about this building and I was thinking about the context of where we are and how much I miss giving hugs to people. So I, I was uh, making this uh, little drawing. That's how I work. I start working. Okay, let's see if we can go down there. Move my mouse out. Okay. So there it is in focus. So it's a couple, it's a couple given a hug. Maybe it's not the one I wanna use, but it's a, I work always in pen first to sketch ideas and things like that. I'm gonna give her a little bit more of a, of a, flesh out the idea so it's easy for me to work in the next step. I, I was thinking that I like to have a hug on the piece and I like to have some magical things going on, something not strictly, not naturalist. I don't, I, I cannot live in the middle between uh, naturalist forms, 
figures and um, and uh, an abstract idea. So, so let's try to mix those things out. So I'm gonna grab it like this. It's a hug. I try to do it a more as ambiguous as possible. Here we go. Boom, boom. Uh, we go and uh, we scan. That's what I do. I'm gonna scan this guy. It's kind of need to warm up a little bit. Secundo, I think your camera battery might be getting low. There's a flashing. Yeah, I hear it, but we're going to leave the camera in a second away. Okay. Thank you for the heads up. You see that red light? Beep, beep, beep. Okay, so that's my thing. I'm going to just leave the camera away. Now I'm going to this build camera and the um, what I'm going to do is share my thing. Share my screen with you. Um, one. Um, so that's my thing of the screen. Um, what I'm gonna do is select what I want to screen, what I want to scan. I want to have it in a resolution of 300 DPI. I want to do it in grayscale. That's more better for me. And I'm gonna put on the button and the desktop. All right, so first I wanna do is isolate that, that thing that we, we just uh, scan. The thing that is already is, is, is still scanning. To Photoshop, which is what I work in general. So what we got there is the pen. So what I'm gonna do with this thing is um Select color range. It's a it's a tool that I really like to use. I'm gonna screen this window here, um, which allows you, as you can see, to to select one color and take it out. And we erase the rest. Erase again. Now we're gonna make it a little bit stronger. There we go. So now we have on the screen the thing I wanna put in this wall. There we go. So in that way, I can work straight out on the wall. Then it's uh, then it's um, then it's gonna be painted. So I can decide colors, I can change colors, I can change sizes and all that in a, in a, in a really organic and without um, much of uh, travel. It's just very easy to work on it. So what I'm gonna do now, and I'm gonna change this video screen is the good thing put it back to here. So what I have here is uh, my Photoshop layers. I think I'm gonna, oh. boom, it died. It just died. I didn't thought about that, guys. Sorry about it. I don't, I don't find where is my, um, thing. 
my, um, how do you call it, this thing? Zoom window to share the other screen. Mm -hmm. Oh, here it is. Boom, boom. Share. I'm not going to show me the Photoshop part, no? Here we go. So that's my Photoshop thing. So if I work here, I come here. Um, I did some work on this um, on this um, thing and this uh, little photo here. So what I did is isolate the. I do, can you guys see the layers that I'm passing through? Yeah. Okay, so this is the picture. Um, here I cut all the windows and all the, the doors and all the things and I, and I duplicate it and I put it on top. It's this one here, I can put a, I can paint the building in green, for example. I do that, like put something so I can, I know which, you know, the signs, of the, can you see the two screens or you can see just one? Just one, okay. Let me, so you, you have a, the idea is that you have all these layers. I have a layer, isolate the tree, then it was there. And I, I gonna have a place where to work. And I had the windows and the sky put it in a, in a different, uh, in a different um, layer. And I have the background layer. So that's pretty much it about this uh, Photoshop interface. Uh, I think we'll stop sharing here and try to come back to this window, come back to the window of where the thing leaves. So now, here we go. That's, um, I have this um, building that I changed the, I, I put all these windows separated. So like I, I can make this uh, drawing and put it here in the between. And uh, I can work on the drawing and having all the windows that it's gonna cut it on, on there independent. So it's a nice workflow to, to go through. I'm gonna create another layer this is something that you can totally do. Uh, I used to do it without, without computers and uh, things with uh, paper. But, um, and I, what I did is like, take a picture of the building, make an, a sketch, take a photocopy of the sketch and drawing on top, on, on, on top and of that building constantly. That's when before, before computers was around. And, uh, now that I can have the computer, it's the, the process is way faster. So what I'm gonna do is select um, one and a aleatory color. I'm gonna put it on this little salmon, all right. And I'm gonna paint and select the your brushes and all that thing. I'm gonna paint the silhouette, silhouette of this person. Very, very rough way. I don't care about what color I'm gonna use because I'm gonna, uh, this thing allows me to change it after. So I'm gonna do that after, figure out what colors I'm gonna put them on. Is the, the, the figure is getting in my mind anyway, so what colors are gonna be. I, one, one of the problems I have, and a lot of people that does this kind of thing, have is like once you see the wall that you're gonna paint, the world calls you all the time and you cannot stop thinking about it. 
and uh, choosing colors and choosing forms and messages that you you wanna you wanna put on it. That's yeah, how I do it. Mm -hmm. I like imperfections a lot. I'm gonna create another layer. Uh, I'm gonna put it under other thing. I'm gonna choose a color and let's say, um, this one. And I'm gonna paint the other figure. Of the hub. I'm going to take the green out because it's bugging me. There we go. Okay. So after that, I was wanting to have a, in the lower part, if you see the cursor there, in the lower part, I would like to have like two different scenes, a scene inside the blue figure and a scene inside the red figure. Like, um, and I didn't think much about it, about the thing, maybe, in this will be um, um, things that evoke uh, companionship or, uh, or, uh, or the sense of being um, together or taking, taking care. Because that's what um, I think when I think about the hospital. My two kids was born in that hospital. And uh, I have, I have a, really a great experience in the hospital. They treat me incredibly well. I feel like <laughs> for being an institution and a concrete block like it is, um, it's been a really, really good experience to have my kids in there. And I feel like taking care. So I'm gonna put a little bit of a something um, like a ground, and I'm gonna put a bench, and somebody sitting on the bench. This is gonna be my guideline about the, this person sitting on the bench with somebody else with a head on the shoulder. A lot of things can be happening in this uh, thing. It could be a really happy moment or it could be a sad moment of companionship too. And I thought about this drawing and I thought um, I start making it and I felt like, wait, maybe I should just do it. Meanwhile, we are taking this quote, talking, talking about it. Oh, there we go. I wanna, I wanna change the color of the line of the hugs. I'm gonna change all the colors right now, as a matter of fact. And I do it with a, something called hue saturation. Um, it's this little window here. Um, and it's, um, I can put polarization here, polarize. And I can work on the intensity of the color, the lightness of the color, and the color itself. Into red, but I don't want a red. I want to maybe 
think I'm gonna go for teal. That sounds something like it. Then I'm gonna jump to the other layer, then I paint the other color. And um, let's say, do the same trick of fuse saturation, colorize it, and uh, maybe a, a warmer color, yeah, ah. something like that. What do you guys feel about those colors? Okay. No, <laughs> me, más o menos, okay. Um, well, you know, being in, having in consideration that I don't have to work with the hospital people, because this is just a, a, a dream, I'm gonna choose the color, just like, <laughs> and I'm gonna put it like that. I'm gonna change the black line, because the black line is really strong too using the same trick. I'm just gonna pass it to white. Maybe, I don't know better. Boom. Are we still on it? I have a sign and say internet is not good. Um, what I'm gonna do too is uh, grab the hospital liar. I'm gonna bring the liars here so you can see it. Grab the hospital liar and uh, duplicate it. And put it on top of everything. And then I'm gonna change uh, to an overlay. So I'm gonna still see all the textures lines that is gonna be the conduits, the electrical conduits and all the things. So I know to not put something important on in those sections. It's important, like you're working, you're not paint, make, making a painting, you're making a mural. It's gonna be in that place long on, on, alone. So you can work around the thing. Um, and to that, to do that is, is you know, you, you, you make sure that everything is in a, in a place and nothing, it's not going to have a window right in the eye or a light or a sensor right on the mouse of a character that you're drawing, you know? Um, so that's an important little section I have. Boom. I'm coming to my layer. So we got, this is the tree. This is nothing. Uh, these are the windows. These are my line. I'm gonna label it. Always label your thing. Um, Cause you end up being uh, having 10 million colors, 10 million things, and then you cannot find anything. All right, so we got there. And um, I think I would like to have in here like uh, populating all this area of the blue, um, you know, like maybe a mountain scene or something like that. Um, something to do with the place. So for that, I'm gonna grab this, uh, I'm gonna just grab the same color. I have it here. I pick the same color with this liquid and then darken it. And now I wanna just need something and it's gonna look like a, a silhouette of a mountain and it's gonna be where it populates this bottom part of this character. I'm gonna grab and print it all, make my thing very big. I'm gonna do it very rough. Because I have this trick, then it's kind of nice. It's uh, used as a mask. 
Just grab it here. You, my time is going away. Bye. Um, and I'm gonna create a click mask from it. So it's gonna, what you do is you right click on this uh, thing. I don't know how technical we wanna go to this thing you, uh, of the layer and you put it on top of the layer and then you put a create clip mask and it's gonna create clip mask of this color. So now it leaves there. Boom, I'm gonna do another monta. I'm gonna just uh, change the color again and put a second color on that monta and work. Something like this. We have a little bit more uh, form on this mountain. It's supposed to live here. And I'm going to have to create a darker color. And I work on the time on the same palette. This is my palette here. So I was the last one I was working on this. I bring it a little with this thing a little bit down and I get a darker color. And I'm going to paint the floor so it's different. Um, and I'm gonna actually use the same color to paint everything on this figure. Something like that. Now I'm gonna grab that layer of the banquito and I like it to be outside too and change the color to something more different than black. Black is so strong, it's so strong. So now you can see the color there in between. You need to be super strong. That's what I wanna do. So now in this figure, I want to have some clouds or something like that there. So I'm going to go back to my layer. And paint some clouds on it. So whatever that is, uh, I'm going to make happy clouds. <laughs> no, that one. Right, so, so same, same thing, get the color, my base color, go a little bit lighter and accept it and go. And close. Is that other thing than com that computers does is like you can definitely just change, just you, you make a mistake, you just fix it, you can erase a mistake. So that's why it's really handy to do this the thing on the computer itself. Around there. So that's um, half of my mirror. The other one in the other color, what do you guys think then it could populate this thing? And click your thing and tell me. <laughs> You're asking what do you think could populate the yeah. mirror? Yeah, I don't have a strong feelings about it. So I don't know. I'm kind of inspired by that. You had that photo of that Columbine earlier. So maybe something floral or like, you know, with like having some like warm colors in there to do, do yeah. something, you know, because you got those nice <clears throat> of the sky mountain. Perhaps. Yeah, I got the Columbines because I thought in making 
Columbine is one is my favorite flower. It's really nice. It's a, uh, it's just the structure of the flower is amazing. So I have those flowers there to um, to to have as a guide. And I thought of how the columbines then come out and come all the way up here in the building. But we can come in and make it a coming up from there. Let's just do it. I'm gonna get my reference. So I have this reference of how the columbines actually are. And I'm gonna put it on my other screen. Then I will show you if my battery didn't run out. My battery did run out. So I'm just gonna create another layer and do a columbine. So yeah. I'm gonna do it in black as the first first time. I like drawing in pencil, but I don't like to paint the black. I don't like it. so I'm gonna do it in black and then I'm gonna change. There we go. I control my things. I'm in general, I'm a little bit more fast, a little way more fussy about about the brushes I use in the and um, when I'm working, there is 10 million of, uh, um, brushes you can choose. So I'm gonna do this, it's gonna pass behind it, and I'm gonna come around here. And I see my, Sorry, something covering it. Are you gonna see more? Honey? Mm -hmm. Come see something really cool. They're gonna do a mural on the- Is hospital. that Laurie Galon? Hello. Hey, Laurie. How's it going? <laughs> Here we go. Um, so I'm just drawing really quickly the columbine, I have the Black photo of the columbine right, right beside uh, on, my, on my third screen. So I know what I'm kind of drawing. I kind of draw it without a reference, but I, you know, it's good to have a reference about. Boom, so that flower is in there. We're gonna work on that. One of the things I love about these flowers, columbines, is then the little leaves and the stems and the little twiddly things that it comes out of it. And how it behaves almost like a vine, but it's not. I'm coming out of here and maybe do the ground here too and make it from this side. A lot of flowers coming out. Um, Garvin, that's a great idea, man. Thank you so much. <laughs> that was a great idea. Let's let's do it. Like the second figure is gonna have the just flowers coming out. A hug of a memory, maybe of a, of a memory of a loss, which is represented with this with this uh, couple here sitting on the bench is bringing comfort in the other person of the heart. And I think comfort and companionship is something that the hospitals should embrace. And they do, because they're quite amazing there. I hope you guys all have good experiences in a Snyder hospital in that, because I did. Another Columbine here. Our leaves. Let's put some grasses coming out of here. I feel like a little bit like the that guy. Uh, how would you call it? The guy with the beard. And talk a uh, happy little accidents and things like that. Talking about like, how I paint. 
now to unify and be things, well, it's me. I'm, I'm like that. And I, maybe I would like a something painted here too. Let's work, let's concentrate on this section. I don't, in general, I don't colorize things with the natural colors. Um, so I'm gonna um, not do that. So I'm not gonna paint it with a lovely yellow and red color of the Columbine. I'm gonna just uh, do other color. Um, let's work starting from this. Actually, let's change the master because the master is not working out very well. Grab this master, come here, the same trick, few situation for me. Then if you work in Photoshop, your short key is Control U, Control U. I saw that Lorraine wanted to see more of an orange. So do you want to try that, Facundo? Orange? Like yeah. around there? Because that's what I was going for. Well, I just saw in the chat, Lorraine. Oh, I, I'm not reading the up. chat. You guys just pipe out. Because I'm not reading the chat. Okay, well, I'll pipe out for her. I hope she okay, doesn't cool. mind. And mm -hmm. she did say, like, try an orange, like a warm yeah. orange or something. Like a, around there. Eh? I, I, I like it. I like the combination of how it goes, orange and the, the blue teal. You guys, uh, if you guys don't know her, Amanda Ugon is part of uh, the collective of artists called uh, Raymond Taquara, which I'm part of it too. And we paint murals all over. So she's been on this process uh, of making this, uh, of uh, assembling and disarming and destroying and assembling again many times. And it's, uh, and it's a pleasure to see you here, Amanda. I just wanted to mention that you're being a little modest. I think you're the founder and creator of Raven Takora. I'm just part of the team. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. Well, whatever, I'm not gonna cry about that now. <laughs> okay, so what about there? And now I'm gonna colorize it with another tone of orange, maybe other thing. Uh, click here and here. I'm gonna click on that. Maybe something more saturated. Oh, what about a yellow? Along there. Doesn't really matter because I can change it after. Which is great. Like I grew up without computers, without this, this thing. I did my university work, university students uh, studies almost without uh, computers. So it was hours and hours and hours. Oh, I tried this color. Oh, I didn't know. Now everything is garbage. <laughs> you know, so computers are pretty, and it's not just time saver. It's a provider. It's a provider of freedom, because if you're working with fear, you're working, you're you're half working on it. You know, if you are able to change color after, you get off that fear of, of uh, oh, I'm gonna ruin the piece. So you are free. And I, and I really like that idea of being free, you know? Um, I have to say too that in the, in the, in the note of the Raybon Taquara that we are, we are a group of four people. Um, we are Amanda Ugon, that's how you pronounce your name, eh? Ugon, yeah, and Amanda Ugon. It's uh, Travis Heber and Stefan Yanderson. And that's who we are as a, as a group. And this year we are working in a series of a uh, bunch of things, bunch of murals. Four by now, but I got an approach uh, yesterday to do a five, that's something you don't know, Amanda. So now you know. <laughs> it's like surprise. Surprise. Um, I don't know if it's gonna happen, but it's uh but it's it's in the talks now. 
So we're going to paint the Friendship Center in Smithers. We're going to paint uh, to the Friendship Center in Terrace. And we're going to paint, um, oh, I'm going to paint the Grendel Group. Um, and we're going to paint another place that I cannot recall now. Oh, yeah, the French School in Smithers. That's what's happening. I wanna do my control view thing and change the black color of my flowers. Okay, that's it. There. And I'm gonna go for a green color. I'm not really happy about these colors now. But I will at some point. Now I feel like it needs um, a little bit more textures about how much, how well, how well we are with time. Okay, cool. Mm. What I want to is a uh, is create some textures, then overlay on this, uh, on this figure here. I believe that um, in, in the context where we live, um, I believe that First Nations art is very important to be represented, represented in public art. Um, so all this, all this uh, drawing and being the hospital, the regional hospital, I think it should have First Nations um, form line on it. Now, I'm not a First Nations person, so I cannot do it. Um, but this will be look different if we work together with our collective, because we are, we, they, they are First Nations and they can do it. For these demonstrations, I'm not doing it because it will be totally out of, uh, uh, out of, what is right, but I think it should have that um, in, a, in a prominent way. But it's just not gonna do it. I'm gonna do other things. When I create another layer here, I'm gonna make it, then it's a part of the clip mark of this. So you see it has this arrow, so it's gonna be just populated on this. Boom. Um, to work off of a text of, I think I would like to have something that is, uh, I would like to have First Nations art, let's say that, like that. But let's uh, work on something uh, a bit magical or, or something that is out of nature completely, something that a bit, um, how do you call it? Square. We're gonna grab this tool and I'm gonna just start making lines in this way. This is selection tool. Okay, there. And I'm gonna paint it with a color close to where I was working. Around there. Um, okay. and now, what I'm going to do is reduce the opacity of it. Around there. You can see it in some places, I cannot see it in others. I'm gonna up the opacity so I can see it more. There we go. And now I'm gonna work on this guy. I'm gonna select it. And I'm gonna create another layer. I'm gonna start shading on this on these uh, figures. Um 
flag and color a little bit further away from it. There we go. Now I'm gonna grab my airbrush tool. So just uh, so you see, you get a you get a lot of different um, brushes here. All of those create different effects and have a different and all have all different parameters. So you click here and you get a scattering. You can see in the bottom here all these things. I wanna change the count of it. It's gonna be more. When I increase it here, it moves a little bit more. And I'm gonna give them wet edges. That's right. I'm gonna try with that. And um, I'm gonna add my size. I'm gonna put my opacity of the thing, of this uh, tool way lower. And I'm gonna start shading on it. Like this so. And in, in, in reality, on the, um, on the wall, I will do this thing with a spray can. Meanwhile, I'm doing this, maybe we can talk about, oh, sorry. We can talk about um, techniques of uh, putting this thing on the wall. So what I, what I do, what we do in general is uh, project this thing just to do the outlines of the thing. This is our, our workflow and while we're doing this, uh, this thing. Um, we once we have a design that we like and we, we feel comfortable with it, we can stand behind it. What we do is um, go to the wall, presumably the wall is, uh, is prepping the wall is first. And then what we do is um, project it. We'll be project the wall with a projector of uh, 5,000 lumens, something very powerful. And we will, I will bring this project, the Photoshop project. So if I have some problems, in any in any things, I can move stuff. If something happened, like they put another lamp, or uh, or suddenly they have uh, water spouts coming out or pipes or something, then it, you know, the time we took the picture, we didn't saw it. We can move it around and fix it. Um, like you work on the wall, you do this. Uh, you do this. Um, how do you call this thing? Mm, translation. I don't remember translation. I don't like this shading. What what we do is uh, be able to move all the things or change the colors so something that is a uh, saddle on the design. You cannot see it in the projection, so you can up it or change the color, so you can see it. Make the mark and bring it, bring it out. So this uh, this tool of Photoshop is uh, really handy for doing those kind of things. Other ways and uh, to do it is uh, throwing lines. You chalk lines. You made a grid, and you copy the grid like it's uh, 1800. You can do that, and it's great because they have these things of uh, you. You have a the happy little accidents. You have these things and they're not perfect and they are not uh, exact. And when you have that, you have things that, that, that come up and it's, they're, they're great, you know? Perfection is uh, boring. That's, don't quote me on that. <laughs> All right, so let's... Uh, Try with more triangles and frames here. Cool. 
gonna keep doing this triangle job work and while the places I'm doing have so what we do is uh, we project it, we outline it, project the canine, outline it, and then you go color by color painting it. And then you choose what color is gonna go first and what color is gonna go second and so on and so forth. Um, so Facundo, yeah. in, the, in the chat here, um, Simone's asking, do you use the layer projected on the wall or just the outline? Uh, depends. But what you can do is a great question. What you can do is um, um, totally change the thing. Like, for example, for the projection, the white line is not going to work. So I'm going to grab the white line and change it to a black line so I can see it for the projection. So I have my computer there to do that to change and, and, and react in different, in, in different um, with different circumstances, you know? Um, that being said, I really love uh, free flowing too, you know? But when you work uh, with organizations and, and people that have interest on the, on the, on the building, and uh, you kind of need to be, um, responsive to of the desires of the people that live and interact with the building all the time. Um, more than the owners, I don't care about the owners, but yes to the people that live in this building. And if, uh, if you present a drawing, you say, Lago, I wanna do, I wanna do this thing. And they say, yes, um, you kind of need to be consequent to that, I think. I like that. Um, I'm gonna keep doing this thing. Of, uh, I'm gonna put another layer more and paint it with a pink. This color, something like that. Mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe this is not gonna work. But I'm trying with another color there. And I'm gonna change it after if I don't like it. Um, so in terms of painting, this particular painting, it will be a lot of roll. I love rolls like um, uh, two inches, uh, I go and get one for you. Yeah. You can see the palette of all different murals we did here. Um, this thing is, a, is an amazing tool. It now allows for a roll like that, big. And the roll is, uh, it's, uh, it has a cut edge to one side, so it's straight and the other side is round. So you can have a little bit of shading in one side, pushing the roll in the side, or you can have a nice hard cut on the other side of the roll. So you, and it has a magnet here, this thing, here, so it it's allows you to put it and not suck in the, the brushes or the things here. Super handy, you, hunt, you, you grab it like that and you can go up the stairs. Amazing tool. So a lot of rolls, that particular piece is gonna, it will be a lot of rolls and it will be using uh, paint and uh, glaze. Um, I like, we like to paint with um, paint, or from Benjamin Moore. Um, it's called, um, it's like, it's like cream. It's, it's, it covers everything. 
and it's a great, great work, great, great thing to work with. Change it to there, and I'm gonna bring it down a little bit light. How I call it, a little bit less committed. There we go. So in this painting, I will paint the first, the background colors first, like this one, this color here, and then uh, do the cutting of the forms with the colors that I, that I will that I start here. And then I will paint the outline on white on top of everything. That's what, that what will be like the, the workflow. I would like to put more flowers too. So let's uh, duplicate this one and uh, move it a little bit down here. here. I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller. And this again is just to like I will not use the same same flower. I would like I'm doing now, but you know, just to do it fast with us, I wanna do it like that. Copy the thing, we did it, did the yellow, I was painting, and then finish the part that I don't have. Mm hmm. It's a lot of parameters. We have another stem that comes here. I would like something that goes around here too. And I'm going to copy another flower. I'm going to copy this flower. And move it and see if I like it around there. Make it smaller. Move it here. And I would add to insects or a uh, more an idea of the sky behind behind the orange too. To have it comes the, the angle so it doesn't look so similar. Do a little bit. Speed it a little bit. Speed it up. And come and raise the things I don't want. Like this was. Now that I have that, I will go to this other layer that has the color. This green. There we go. And do a little bit of an outline on that, on this, and I just did. Just to see if it works, really. One thing that is important when you work on the on a mural is um, work with big brushes, big rollers. Um, this thing is to be seen from afar, you know. And if you've been working all the time in canvases, you kind of find the a lot of people find that it's hard to extrapolate the sizes. But if you work with a brush like this. You work with a brush like that, depends on the size of your of your mirror. So let me give me a second. Yeah. 
There we go. So if I see somebody painting a big field with this thing, I will get really mad because <laughs> you're gonna go forever. You're gonna be like really careful that the line is perfect and it's uh, and, and it's all like and then but it, and it's just like so because you're painting it, you're right there, you're close. So you see this imperfection that you did. So you need a small brush, but nobody's gonna see the mural that close. The mural is gonna be seen from afar. So you need to have like this beautiful brush. I love using the brushes and they call it for, uh, um, they call it for uh, other things, for varnish. I use it for acrylic paint. They work amazing. When this thing gets wet, it gets a perfect edge. And you can cover a lot during a, it's, you know, like having an angle and pulling. Always pull, never push. That's my painting advice. Um, I'll come back to the thing. You can do a little bit of outline so it doesn't look so different. Hmm. I'm gonna change the color of the orange now. Just a bit a different color. Work it around. The green is gray though. A little more intensity. It's gray to a thing. And what I'm doing now here is not, a, I don't know, I don't know why it tells me that it's, that's the right color or not, or, or, or whatever, but I think it's more an emotional thing and I don't try to put any explanation on it. Remember those emotions? Yes. No, I'm gonna change it. There we go. Two different kind of letters. Wow, black flowers, black columbine. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what I want to say. Hmm. No, I really like this. I'm gonna start off like this. I'm gonna come and erase the shadowing that I did. Then I lose here. I'm gonna take it a little bit back. I want to see it, but not all the time. Correct. Now, I would like uh, to have in my lines, these lines, remember, is the white lines kind of thing that have these figures. Um, I want to go and work a little bit more on them. We have no liar, so I can have a escape route. And put in a little bit more definition on these characters, on these silhouettes. And so, You know, I would not like to define that it's one is a woman and it's a, I don't, I would like to have a genderless. Just human figures.
um, so I, in a deep sense, I think uh, it would be best if we treat ourselves like that. Maybe I will add another kind of flowers in some point to this. I'm not sure about either about this particular high. I guess uh, it, it will try to find a high that is uh, something um, that is full of support and affection. I try to do it when I do this thing, when I do that. But I don't know if I will cheat. Because something is, is, you say, say a lot of things, you know, with the, uh, gender or the form or the little hair or the position of the shoulders. Is this person crying? Is this person not? Is this is comfortable? Is happy with this hug? Is not happy? Is sexualized? Definitely don't want to sexualize the hug. I want something like um, full of love and support. Well, and sex cannot be like that. But is not what I want to say here. And see if um if I gonna I create another liar and I gonna just do a bit of a shade, not just a white line, it's just a little bit of shade. I have the hint that it's not gonna work, but I'm gonna try it. Maybe it does work. In general, if I'm working in a mural design, I'm gonna be working till here and I will leave it for uh, as long as I can and then come back and look at it. And then, uh, by then it's gonna become really apparent what is missing and what is not, what is actually needed, what is not. It is, uh, why you choose that color? You choose that color just because you find it is a good color? I, you know? And uh, leaving some space between the, the moment that you, thought about it and the moment you did you do it it's a great thing to detach yourself a little bit okay and these shades i would i like i'm trying to not do anything and i cannot do it with paint with real paint And when I, and I don't know if you notice, but when I work, I try to work far. So I, I don't over, overdo it either, you know? Overdo it with details and stuff. The temptation of putting details are, is huge. Um, other thing that happened with murals is the level of how you're gonna see it. Um, for example, somebody who's entered this door is gonna see this part very, very close. Somebody walking through this thing here is gonna be this, see this part. So I can afford to put more detail on the bottom part of the, the images. On, it, on this example, it's like that. You know, like you can put more details and more forms in there and be more big and huge and more bold colors on the top and less detail. 
because nobody's going to see it that close. Um, yeah. I think that's what I want to take it today. I like the shy look. So this one color that one is that one, this one, right? No, it's just going to back. I'm going to grab all these guys. Hmm. This one is kind of going to duplicate them. I'm putting into the other field. Down, put it down, put it down. Where are you? Where are you? I want it. Boom. I'm going to move them on the side, from the side. Something like that. And I'm going to tell them to be okay. I'm going to tell them to be a clip like uh, this. So it's all probably and nothing goes on the other side. Um, now I'm going to merge in. So make all those three layers in just one. And I'm going to change the color. To achieve transparency in uh, in the wall, I we use um, we use something called uh, glaze, um, and you can uh, you can apply it. You can apply you make the paint and it was totally opaque, in something semi transparent. I think that. That I'm not gonna make it smaller to smaller shapes. Okay. I'm not gonna repeat it. Pretty short. Then again, if I'm going to actually do this mural, I will actually do them, not just repeat them and try to do it fast. Yeah, that's pretty much, pretty much it. I had some photos. Um, of um, of uh, the other projects so or how, how the thing looks when uh, when you are projecting it, for example. Um, here we go. So this is from a mural a couple of years back. It's called Wounds. It's a design of Amanda Ugon, um, this part here and this part here. And it's, um, it's um, a devil's club. And um, so what we did, this thing is not trace it. We are tracing it as in this photo with a projector, it's really far away. So that's why you need a, a lot of power. And always when you're painting at night, it's always this and this and this, always street lights everywhere. So you need to have something very powerful. Um, the problem when you go out of it, when you get out so far away is that the pixels of the of what the projector project they are huge so you get this and then you need to work it just is a guide of what you think and the form need to be and then you work to and this is a Travis silver here painting in this picture making the design is a Maybe that this is the Amanda Wong's design of a uh, berry. Um, soap berry, I think it is. Is it? I don't know if I remember the name. Um, the, the salmon berry. Salmon berry. There we go. Salmon berries. Um, that's how we do the, 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 the Trans the trans uh, of the then some things are um, 
So you know, here's the flowers, for example. Um, this shading here in this particular thing, it's uh, made by um, a technique called, uh, I call it wax in, wax off. <laughs> you paint with a dilute color and, uh, and then you take it out. You grab a piece of cloth and you take it out. You paint it and you take it out. You paint it, you stretch it, and you take it out. And in that form, you can make all these gradients that you see in this picture here. So that's how I would do the shading on the other paint or spray paint or this. We try this spray paint is kind of unruly too. Um, that's one way. Here's another picture that it has that, that thing. You just put a little bit of, uh, um, I believe I'm doing the lighter color. And when you see it from close, this kind of makes no sense. It just doesn't, doesn't do justice of what it was. But when you see it from far away, it makes all the sense. The shades become three-dimensional. It's not like flat. So you need to always, when you're painting, be thinking that you are far away. Part of your brain needs to be away, detached from the wall. Um, yeah. Here's the team. Amanda is not here. I didn't realize that. <laughs> That's Amanda and Stephanie. Painting that mural. And with that, I um, just want to say thank you for being with me. If you have any questions, um, shoot it up. Stop sharing my screen. Thank you so much, Facundo, for sharing that with us. Um, it was a fascinating process to watch. and. Uh, it, I feel like I've gotten behind the scenes look at what's been going on in the North for murals. Um, yeah, and I think it's a great idea to do a bit of a question round at this point, if anyone wants to chat a little more, ask some questions. Mm -hmm. I'll ask a question. I love Charlotte. Hey, have you ever had trouble placing the projector? Yes. Like a, a, can you talk about yes. that? Um, well, I, I do it in, a, in the Photoshop, you can uh, skew the image. So if you're not a perfect, perfect uh, perpendicular to the, to, the, to the wall, you can move it on the side and then skew. Some projectors have it, uh, it's called Keen, and uh, you can skew the, the edges. So like it's, it's a square, but if you are here in this side, this side is gonna be smaller. So you can make it in this way, contradict what the image is doing to make it, to make it look perfect. And for that, when, you, when I took the picture of the building, I to, be, to take the picture with the flattest lens I have. And then, um, so it doesn't have the formations and then have markers than they are and then if the wall is totally flat, if you are so lucky and you don't have a window on that wall, you have markers like, oh, it's the four breakdown. Boom, make a marker there. So I know that tip, that point where the drawing uh, interact with the edge is what I need to achieve in this side and it's what I need to achieve in this other side. I have another marker down and below. So that, in that way, I figured out and it's gonna be looking good. In other way, um, uh, doing the chalk line, chalk line and grid, uh, the, the grid thing, it, it's, it's a beautiful way to do it. If you don't have the angles to do a projector, if you cannot work at night, if the place is totally illuminated constantly, if you live in uh, the Yukon and you don't have night, so, to project. So what you do is uh, you make a drawing of uh, you, you in, in your computer, you snap a grid on top, 
the lines, and then you do the grid on the wall. And you do it by chalk line. Chalk line, you guys know what it is? It's a great tool to have straight lines. Um, that's one way. The other way that is a great, and then I work with a guy that did it, is taking a picture of, of it, of the wall, making whatever, making whatever forms and signs and whatever, you just go at it, have fun making with a spray can. You do whatever you do, you take a picture of that, and that's your grid. Because you're gonna cover all these things. But if you put your drawing on top of all the scribbles that you did, you don't have to do the chalk line. You just go, oh, this is the little triple line that I did, and it's in your picture and your reference. So you follow that. Okay, my line with the eye or the flower in this case, it goes in this triangle on top of this triangle. So that's how you do it. It's funner because you have like a lot of people, it's just so fun to go out of the wall without a plan. It's, it's just a, it's a freeing thing. I, I do music and I do some freestyle um, singing and, and, the, and it's very similar. The feeling that you get when you get to a wall without a plan and the feeling that you get when you go to a microphone and it's a lot of people there and it's music and you don't know what you're gonna say. Uh, and all of a sudden you open your mouth and you're, you are singing, you're, you're saying things. And it's the same thing with the spray gun. Maybe it's not the best thing that is going to happen, <laughs> but it's going to, it's good. you're going to have a great moment doing it. You know? I see a hand up. That means what? <laughs> yeah. I have a question. Good morning. <laughs> Uh, I'm just wondering about uh, that glaze. I'm assuming it helps add to the longevity of the mural and the paint. So mm -hmm. that is my my question. I, yeah, what exactly is the purpose of the glaze, and how long make... would it last? Like a painting like this, and is there like a like a plan? Like you have to refresh it in five or ten years, or like what's the effect of the sunlight? Those kinds of questions. Um, well, that, that the reason I work with uh, paint um, from Benjamin Moore is because um, it has a UV protection that is incredible and a coverage that is incredible. It's really expensive. It's around 100 bucks a, a, a can, a gallon. Uh, it mix really well. But the UV protection it has is incredible. I painted mural in, in Smithers like um, uh, five years ago. Before I used to paint with other kind of paints, and they all fade. Three years depends. You know, Argentinian sun burns everything. That is like so. You tend to paint with uh, earth colors, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> you know, but this uh, I paint is a is a wall that is a. Uh, it's a cinder block wall it has one face and hits the, the south and the other hits the east. And then um, the east doesn't have so much sun, but the south side wall is constantly being cooked. The color after five years, I think it was, is exactly the same. It's incredible. It's really, it, it, I like it. Benjamin Moore, obviously, doesn't pay me or anything like that. That is an incredible paint. Um, the character of a um, mural uh, uh, is, is, a, is a public art that goes away. It doesn't stay there forever. Muralism I look, I, I, to, the, to the Mexican style, like uh, Diego Rivera and things like that, is they paint these things inside. You know, the, they don't paint much outside. The things on the paint outside, they got lost inside like a doing fresco thing doing it's painted murals inside those things could be last forever but the outside things somebody's gonna come with a can with a spray can somebody some developer is gonna is gonna make a building on top 
you know, is uh, uh, or or similar mural is gonna or your thing is uh, it's not more relevant to the people than live there, and uh, gets painted with another mural, and um, it is sad, but it, it's like language is constantly moving, you know. I think it, trying to get a static is not the thing. Now to the glaze question, the glaze, it makes your paint then is uh, super cover, cover uh, opaque, it covers everything. So you, you cannot do much shading or making it like uh, um, two colors interact, interact in different way and, and, and having a third color result of that interaction. So you put glaze, you mix it up, depending how much glaze you put and what is the paint that you're using, you're gonna have some transparency on, on, the, on that paint. So you can have a you can you can have different effects with it. Um, I have a question. Um, it sounds like you've done murals kind of wrapping around the corner. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just going back to like how you're laying it out, does that change how you're projecting or laying it out, like with perspective or anything like that? Yeah, it totally does. Okay. It totally does. And what you do is you project it from this side of the wall, and then you do all the markers and have these um, um, little things marked. Um, you know, I know that, for example, in uh, this designer, which is good, um, I'm gonna share the screen with some luck. There we go. Boom. You see them, guys? Do you see them? Okay, cool. Um, so here is the line of the building. Let's make a line there to make it clear where it is. Uh, put it on top of everything on my liars. That's my line. Um, I try not to have like um, something like a face that is going to be totally deformed if you see it from one side or the other. Try to choose a part of the design then it doesn't really matter like the flower here um the stem of the um subatomic superatomic gigantic columbine flower um it doesn't matter if it, if it breaks you're gonna have a place a, a place and then uh, then it's gonna be perfect then it's not gonna be a kink it's not gonna be a deformation you move to outside of that place and it's and, and it's and it's and it's shift. And uh, that's okay. I like I love that. I love to be walking on the things and things make sense, and then you keep walking and it doesn't make sense anymore. It's another way of playing with the building that I really like. Um, so what I do is uh, project from this section here. I know that's my mark. When I do the, the line, I come in this side on this, uh, on this, you see it better, right? Um, on this wall, and I, I, I make the mark where this line went, this and this and this and all the things that I, all these parts. And then when I move the projector, I gonna match it. And being that they are all different layers in photo, living in Photoshop, um, you can totally do it. And it's another way, another thing that is uh, that is really helpful is called faking it, which is lie. Okay, I'm gonna push this line where it need to be. I don't care if it doesn't go. Cool. Thank, 
Okay, it sounds like there aren't any more questions. Um, there were a few comments, Facundo, that I could read out. Um, I think all of the questions were answered. Um, but just, just feel free to turn your mic on and ask a question if I miss it. I'm just going to read the comments at the end here. So Simone says, thanks for sharing. Melanie says, thank you very much. Lorraine said, amazing amount of computer technique involved. Awesome sharing of your skills and enthusiasm. And Laurie says, so glad I could join. My world is a better place now. And what, when I look at a mural, I'll be breaking down the process in my mind and having a greater appreciation for the project. And if I missed any comments that you guys would like to share, feel free to just turn on your mic and share them. Okay, so if there's nothing else, Vakundo, I just want to finally um, thank you so much for this time, for taking the time to share um, what you know, what you've learned, how it connects with the North. Um, I love seeing, I just loved seeing that process and how how it comes from this hand drawing into uh, the final completion of a mural. Um, I think it makes it makes seeing, like Laurie said, it makes seeing these murals so much more interesting because we know a little bit of what went on behind the scenes. So thank you so much. Thank you guys for being here. Put in a, in a thing. Are you clapping? Oh my gosh. <laughs> thank you so much.